This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Still can't believe it was Yumiko who... I can't believe that Michiru was the only one who didn't spy on us. Oh! See, now this here is a nice CG. I like this one. It's a cute little CG, and it's not lewd. That's the best kind. I enter the classroom a little before the time we agreed to meet. Sachi's already waiting inside. Alright, see you, Nick. Have a good one. Enjoy your time with family. Ooh, for a week. Very nice. Hope you have a good time. Well, yeah, we did have a promise. Anyway, you came in uniform? Really are a class rep to the core, aren't you? I see. I'm pretty sure Sachi's the only one who has ever bothered to read the fine print at the back of the booklet, but fair enough. <laughs> to be honest, I'm having a hard time picturing you as a bleached blonde tsundere. Also, has Sachi always had pigtails at the back of her head? I don't think I've ever noticed that before. I'll leave that to your discretion. Anyway, I guess the first question is how we should go about testing you. Wow, Sachi's coming onto us really strongly! Please give me a coherent explanation of how you arrived at that conclusion. Appreciate the thought, but your jokes tend to have the opposite effect. Yeesh. I love how we just have, like, <laughs> our hand on our hip, like, Oh, girl, you did not just do that. Things have already taken a dubious turn, but there's no going back now. Alright, I guess I'll choose some questions for material we'll probably be learning in the fall. Feel like starting with any subject in particular? I see. In that case, let's start with math and see how far you can go on a day's worth of studying. Alright, next up is a square root problem. Think you can handle it? Aw. I like these CGs, they're very adorable. <laughs> Correct. As soon as I start actually offering her problems, I'm startled all over again by Sachi's academic skills. All the questions I'm giving her are from sections of the textbook we haven't learned in class yet, and she's solving them with apparent ease. That doesn't change when I start mixing in my own original problems either, so it's clear that she didn't just mindlessly memorize the textbook. So what, did you study this yesterday as well? Just how much did you get through? But what the heck, how do you even have time for that? Sachi delivers this line with her usual calm smile, but... If what she's saying is true, she's mastered nearly an entire year's worth of material in a single day. I guess that would explain how she's been answering problems we won't be looking at for months so easily. Just for reference, what time did you get to bed last night? Sachi! You pulled an all-nighter? Plausible in Sachi's case, but I've got one very simple question. Why did you feel the need to try that hard? Oh, I am so glad I don't have to take tests anymore. Sure, but that's hardly a reason to stay up all night. In an admirable display of dexterity, Sachi tilts her head to the side in confusion even as she's nodding her consent. I had similar thoughts about her ridiculous daily preparation for class, but this only confirms my impression. The girl puts an unbelievable effort for the flimsiest of reasons. True, you can wrap up everything just by calling Sachi diligent by nature, but I have a feeling that behavior has something to do with why she's in this school in the first place. Well, whatever the case, I have to admit, you're taking me by surprise here. I didn't expect you to be the, quite this impressive. So, 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure the range of problems you've solved would already be more than enough to amaze the others. Hmm... Michiru and company asked me to find Sachi's limits. As long as she's continuing to answer the questions correctly, it'd be premature to end the testing. Well, as long as it's alright with you, mind playing a little longer? Are you doing this on purpose? By the time the sun touched the horizon, Sachi had worked her way into questions from next year's math curriculum without a single mistake. And so we agreed to suspend testing for the evening and continue tomorrow. When I return to the school grounds after my daily running session, Sachi greets me with a broom in hand. Sweeping the courtyard today, I see. Because the schools are too cheap and or lazy to hire a groundskeeper. Not that diligence is a bad thing, but it feels like you're in the middle of some chore every time I run into you. <laughs> Are you really capable of that? In that case, I think I'd rather see you working hard like always. Ooh. Trotting over to a bucket full of ice sitting in the shade of the tree, Sachi retrieves a bottle of water and brings it back to me. Aw, that's really nice. You had this waiting for me? This girl is so freaking sweet. I see. Thanks, I appreciate that. With a few words of thanks, I accept the plastic bottle from Sachi, then drop myself onto a nearby bench, not tree branch, and quickly gulp it down. Tasty. Mm, tasty. <laughs> it looked like a plain bottle of water, but there's a bit of lemon juice and honey added for flavor. Another thoughtful touch on Sachi's part. Typical that the girl didn't say anything about the extra effort she put in. Why not mention it? Might have gotten some of the praise that she likes so much. Considering her request for compliments, Sachi doesn't exactly flaunt her accomplishments. Then again, that clumsily selfless side of her personality is probably part of what makes her impossible to dislike. I like her singing voice, too. As I'm pondering these matters, Sachi returns to her cleaning. She has, like, the freaking cutest singing voice, and the lyrics are kind of terrifying. <laughs> Which makes it a funny dichotomy. Hey, Sachi, can you maybe give this particular song a rest? No, to be perfectly frank, it really doesn't work for you. A maid cheerfully singing gruesome jingles as she cleans is just too surreal. Right, I get the picture. <sighs> Looks like I'll have to take this up with our budding songwriter. But either way, you really seem to be enjoying sweeping. Aww. Your parents sound like nice people. Don't think I didn't notice the past tense there. Loved past tense. Either she doesn't love them anymore, or they're not around anymore. Past tense, huh? This is the first time I've heard Sachi talk about her parents, but her expression visibly softened when she mentioned them. Presumably, she, they're probably dead, and that's why she mentioned her aunt and uncle earlier. Even putting aside her pathologically honest personality, you can tell from a look at her face that she's not lying about how much she loved them. Come to think of it, I did have one other acquaintance who enjoyed cleaning up, although that was a long time ago. <laughs> come on, what does it look like I'm doing? I'm picking up the trash. I mean, next time I come here to play, wouldn't it be nicer to find the place clean? 
She was the sort of kid who'd actually go around picking up the garbage scattered around the playground after playing. Oh, that was a girl. Whoops. I think she was younger than me, but the, her sheer energy and forceful personality made it feel like the opposite. The girl was a genuine tomboy, constantly laughing and running around. Pretty much the polar opposite of our docile maid like Sachi. No, it's nothing. But still, it's pretty unusual for me to remember something from before I met my master. Since my memories before that point are pretty much all the ones I'd rather erase from my mind. In the otherwise quiet classroom, the constant movement of pen on paper is the only real sound. After lunch, Sachi and I picked up the testing where we left off yesterday. <laughs> Sachi suddenly covers her chest with both hands, as if only now realizing that I'm watching her. Sachi, it's not my fault that the text box is right next to your chest. Continuing in the same tone, she offers me a cro a a coquettish smile. And what if I am? <laughs> no, I've already had the birds and the bees lesson. Spurred on by the intimate atmosphere of a one-on-one -on -one meeting, a younger girl summons up her courage and makes a flirtatious approach. Normally, this is exactly the sort of gift horse no red-blooded man would think twice about accepting, but... Wonder why I'm not getting even slightly in the mood. Are you really Sachi? You kind of sound different, and you're definitely acting different. Okay, you can stop the act. Okay, there we go. Maybe she was pretending to be Amine. Once I give the signal, Sachi's attitude snaps instantly back to normal. No, you, you were pretty convincing. No, if anything, I think you were a bit too convincing. <sighs> if I didn't know Sachi, I'm pretty sure I would have brought, bought that as her real personality. But since I do, the contrast was kind of bizarre. Do you have any sense of shame to cast aside in the first place? Rude. Not sure if I agree with you there. In my experience, shy people don't generally take their clothes off in front of others. True! <laughs> no, that is something to be embarrassed about. Does she seriously believe that? The girl's definitely something else. Although, in this case, that's not necessarily a compliment. Right. Guess it was sort of my modest attempt at getting back at you for coming so well prepared. Well, the point of this is to determine the limits of your academic ability, but the more you study, the more those limits go up, right? At this rate, the testing might never actually end. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm giving her problems even harder than yesterday's, and she's still working her way smoothly through every question. No, it's my fault for not saying anything about cramming beforehand. Just try not to approach this quite so seriously from now on. I briefly drop my hand into Sachi's head as we speak, and soon receive a smile in return. What? No. It's just that the younger women that I've known tended to act something like that. Well, when I was talking to you in the courtyard earlier, I remembered one in particular. Struck me that this girl was pretty much the exact opposite of an obedient maid type like you, Sachi. I got kind of interested in seeing if you could pull it off. Well, if I'm being perfectly honest with myself, the part about tickling the hearts of older men might have been tacked on for other reasons. Yeah, so anyway, that's not particularly my type or anything. 
Apparently satisfied with my explanation, Sachi closes her eyes and nods deeply. That's a very familiar gesture. But it's rare for her to ask this many questions of me in the first place. By the way, what do you think about that sort of person? When I ask for Sachi's thoughts as an extension of this little experiment, she pauses for a moment before replying. Her expression suddenly grown serious. True, being selfish is a bad thing. A bad thing, eh? I've noticed before that Sachi's judgments tend to be delivered in simple black and white terms. In particular, she has something of a habit of dividing things between the good and the bad. I'd always thought of it as a minor quirk, but from the strange emphasis she places on those words, I'm beginning to think it might be a central part of her worldview. There is good, and there is evil, by the way. <laughs> well, I guess that's enough of a break. Let's get back to the tests. Deciding to refocus on the reason we're here, I cut off our meandering conversation. Sachi responds by promptly turning her notebook to a fresh page of paper. No, I'm going to jump a few steps and start giving you problems for material we're not scheduled to learn in this school. Don't describe yourself that way. Don't really have a choice, you're just that good. Okay, that's more than enough of that. I'm giving you the problems now, alright? As the scenery outside begins to take on the orange tint of an early twilight, Sachi's pen comes to a halt after the last problem of the day. Solved it? Hmm... Haven't seen her this uncertain about a problem yet, but let's see... Picking up Sachi's notebook, I compare her work assignment against the answer uh, in the collection of problems. It's correct. Has nothing happened in the hour you were gone, Marty? Uh, we visited her room. Sachi's getting a lot more, um, blatant with, like, <laughs> the flirtations, I guess I'll say. And apparently she's doing too well in school, so, like, everyone else is like, like, Yuji, you need to, like, privately tutor her and then try to ask her a question that'll stump her. And that that's what we've been doing this whole time, basically. Apparently Sachi's lack of confidence was genuine rather than an attempt at modesty, judging from the way she slumps back in her chair with a relieved smile. From the look of fiends, she might finally make her first mistake tomorrow. In that case, let's take it easy for a little while. I'll buy you something to drink. You taped your rental textbook shut because you used tape as a bookmark. That's rough! <laughs> What? You want some soda in particular? You just, you better say it now. <laughs> you better not ask for squirt. Only Harry Potter drinks that. Hesitantly mumbling vague words, Sachi doodled small circles on her notebook paper. I see. So that's what this is about. Taking an educated guess from Sachi's attitude, I gently bring my hand back to rest on top of her head. You did good today, Sachi. And this time I begin to slowly stroke her hair back and forth. Sachi lets out a quiet sigh as her eyes fall closed. Must have tickled a bit. You make the same face every time I do this, you know that? Reminds me of a kitten having its face cleaned by its mother. By which I mean you're just that defenseless. Um, to what? Alright, that about enough? I finally stop petting Sachi once my hand grows warm from the motion. She responds with a polite little bow of thanks. Kind of an odd request, though. Not like having your head stroked is going to help with your fatigue, is it?
Okay, then. Man, I need to market that, then. That effect? <laughs> Impressively forceful and earnest words, although I can't say that makes them any less bizarre. But still, I've got to watch my step around this girl. Lately, these little petting sessions have started to feel oddly pleasant on my end as well. All right, so we're done with the testing for today. You have other plans? Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues, see? <laughs> In that case, let's get back to the dorm before she starts throwing a temper tantrum. Yeesh, shrill. The instant we enter the door, Makin is shouting in our faces, almost as if she first saw the exact moment of our return. As she speaks, Makina holds something out to Sachi. Oh my gosh. Not more of the stupid tuna fish man show. Uh-huh. Yeah, but they usually don't go and do it again. Or maybe you just dropped it when you were cleaning? Who the heck is Mr. Nakamura? Putting aside that particular mystery, it's pretty surprising that Sachi didn't realize it was missing. Well, if you dropped your cell phone in the bathtub, it's probably not going to work anymore. Going underwater is probably going to be fatal unless you have some special waterproof model. Accepting her cell phone from Akina, Sachi gently slides it to inside of her clothing. That's not how that works. Just to be sure, that was an attempt at a joke, right? I see. Alright, Sachi, forget I asked. It is, but it's also kind of your fault. I'm sure your image is important too, but I think you should be more worried about getting a replacement for that phone as soon as possible. Never know when you'll really need it. With those words, Sachi retrieves the dead cell phone from her bosom and returns it to the usual place inside her pocket. Depends on the show. If it's Blue's Clues, yes. If it's Tuna Fish Man, heck no. Well, can't say I have any plans, but... No, not that show! I'm, I'm on General Spare Rib's side. His evil plan is to put up barbecue restaurants in Japan. How is that evil? That's like that's a great idea. Tuna Fish Man is a Sunday morning show, right? And more importantly, wouldn't it be kind of creepy if I really did start che cheering on fresh fish superheroes with you? I'll peel you like a banana here and now, you bogus maid. You sure as heck aren't acting like it. What are these metaphors? Oh boy. Oh boy. Ah. I think that's all the grisea I can handle in one day. That was... That was quite a thing, eh? Oh boy. Well, Sachirut is not exactly what I was expecting. It is interesting being on an official route now. I just... I'm hoping we maybe get a little more of her backstory next time. We didn't really touch on that at all. It was mostly just a bunch of skits that involved Sachi and a lot of uncomfortable jokes. So, 
I'm going to end the stream here. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll probably be doing this again next week at 1 p.m. again. And tune in for Monday and Wednesday night streams for Backyard Baseball. Those are always a lot of fun. All right. I will wish you all adieu here. Hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend, and God bless.